Hello, hello. Welcome to Actors Anonymous Podcast. I'm your host, Wee Sam Keish. And if you heard somebody coughing, that was my co-host, Jordan Burbank. Yeah, that was... I, I'm, I have this disease lately. <laughs> I should have told you about it since we've been in the room for like three weeks. That's a great way to start. Um, no, talking about a disease. Yeah. I do that on all, my, all, on all my first dates. Right when you go into the interview. Yeah, right. Our show today is brought to you by <laughs> Cast It Talent. Cast It Talent is the exclusive partner of Cast It's network of more than 10,000 of Hollywood's top casting directors, producers, directors, and studio execs. And every month they do a showcase where you get to be seen by some of Hollywood's top casting directors and have a chance to win $500. That's a pretty good deal. That's true, yeah. Especially with their pro account. Um, you get to do one every month. Our guest today is Mr. Evan Williams. You might know him from Awkward. Versailles, which will be coming up soon somewhere. We don't know when <laughs> or where, but it's coming up soon, so keep your eyes open. Very soon. Secrets. He was also on Degrassi, The Next Generation, and Baxter. Evan, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. Um, you were Versailles. Yes. This is a project you've been working on since when? Uh, I started about this time last year in Paris, France, and I was there till about March of this year. Okay. So one of the reasons why I kind of want to, I wanted to have you on the show and talk about the evolution of acting and how during specific periods of time, you can tell what people were thinking, social problems, political strifes. Uh, relationships, the way they dealt with things, their humor. I mean, the list goes on and on and on mm. by reading plays during those time periods or learning about a playwright's life. If we go back to like, when did theater start? I think for me, in my opinion, it all started back in caveman days when people were talking about the hunt during the fi around the fire. Absolutely. And they have, uh, you know, I'm sure, and this is just me, of course, guessing but i think it's a fair guess you know those uh, caveman paintings yeah. on the wall uh -huh. there there's there had to be some kind of presentation absolutely with <laughs> with like it's like, like the, the the old age powerpoint <laughs> yeah, like, with a stick <laughs> exactly <laughs> absolutely <It's> like <laughs> this click <laughs> right <laughs> and then you go into like the greek times the greek plays and everything like that i just i don't know i find that so incredible for actors that if you really want to become a better actor, in my opinion, learn about the different periods of um, acting time. styles. Yeah, there's a totally. book called Cohen, uh, written by Cohen. <coughs> it's called Styles, and it's picked up. It's picked some of the major styles of acting and theater throughout the ages. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, you start learning about the, the. If you read the play without reading what the style was in that generation, the, the play doesn't make sense to you. It's not interesting. You're like whatever. But if you read about the history during that time, what was going on, the people's mm. humor, the playwright's life, man, that story jumps out of the page. Totally. Would your research for, oh, I just, I just hit the table. <laughs> I'm angry. No, uh, your research for Versailles, uh -huh. did you have to do a lot of this kind of research? Well, I, actually, uh, I went to theater school and it was a classical uh, repertory training Excellent. program. Yes. And so I had the great opportunity and also uh, it was very difficult, but I had the great opportunity to study a whole lot of different styles. I got to study restoration. I studied right. a lot of Shakespeare. We studied kabuki. We studied clown. We studied mask. We studied all sorts of physical theater. We did the Commedia dell'arte. We did a whole bunch of different styles, and it was almost like we were uh, given a, a sort of tool belt, and we learned all these tools, and then we just sort of whip out the ones that we need when we need them. Right. And uh, we also learned realism and modern techniques and, you know, Meisner and all, you know, all those Stanislavski and all those things as right, well. Right, right, right. But I was really fascinated by the older stuff because of how physical it was. And I think one of the differences in this day and age is that a lot of acting is sort of inside out because we're used to, uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but I feel, feel like we're used to as an audience now seeing human beings in a frame. Mm -hmm. We're used to seeing, like it's a language, film is a language and the human race has gotten really good at speaking that language to each other and so it's not so we don't have to tell each other as much about what's going on and that's why a sort of much more naturalistic style has developed in the last hundred years because we don't have to do this for somebody to know that uh, uh, for people who can't see i just put my back of my head to my hand uh in a very histrionic way uh so we don't have to be histrionic because we're used to speaking the language but back in the day the language was uh, uh more archaic in a way. I'm not going to say it's any better or worse. It was just a different 
type of speaking the language. Well, I mean, logistically, I mean, whenever you're doing a, a Greek play and mm -hmm. it's in like a amphitheater, you yeah. have to be big and exaggerated. Absolutely. But if you look at the way they taught acting, it mm -hmm. still had to come from a real place. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a there's a a Russian guy that we studied. Oh my god, I can't even remember his name right now, but uh, he was big on outside in, mm -hmm. which was uh, it's about archetypical gesture and about um, if you put your body in a certain way, right. there's a certain subconscious or uh, somatic sort of understanding that your body will then tell you how you're oh, feeling, yeah. like a, a supplication, for example, or rejection. Something like that. The simple act of moving your body in this way will uh, it will inform the emotional life of your body, right. and then you can inform the emotional life of the character that you're playing. And I, that's totally interesting, but it's just not the way that things are typically done now. So to get back to your question about Versailles, um, it was my first chance really to get to use a whole bunch of the stuff that I learned in theater school that I haven't really been putting to use or getting to put to use in my career because it's been so much modern naturalistic type of acting and so right. it was a I had a ball it was a blast getting to like in as soon like I, I play a character who is a, a dandy yeah and like in, down in the 17th century and uh, so I had frills here and frills there and, and everywhere and as soon as I put the costume on I like I stood up three feet taller and right. I, I like was the cock of the walk man and it, it was it was so much fun because in that era people like you say people prided themselves on their ability to be heard because people it, it was a, a grander stage because we didn't have the technology to be looking you know into everybody's pupils all the time mm -hmm. and so it, it was like that on the stage and it was also like that in life and uh because of the story of versailles sort of about the uh the court of louis the 14th as he rises to power it is sort of like a stage for all these characters as they're sort of trying to one-up each other and trying to grab onto the coattails of the king are you saying it's like the modern day housewives of Versailles? It's very much, <laughs> yes, yes, very much like that. I, I, in fact, we made that joke from time to time. Except how? it's like a little bit more backstabbing. Like how they were back then, huh? <laughs> yeah, then a little bit more death, like a little bit more like it was, it's pretty high stakes. Like people are dying left and right. Have you ever, I want to get back to Versailles, but sure. I was just curious, have you ever done animal instincts? Uh, describe that. Or animal essences, excuse me. Oh, like kind of like working with an with an animal for a character, right? Absolutely, yeah. I, I I'm a part of an acting studio here in L.A. called the Lonsdale Smith Studios, and that's one of the things that we'll do for every character is we'll explore and we'll get into the physicality of the animal. Right. Yeah. I, I we did that in college. I went to the University of Tulsa, and, and I had a great acting program there, and uh -huh. we it was like kind of a it, we went through a like a lot of the styles you were just uh, mentioning. We we studied over there as well, and. Mm. I just love how, as an actor, you have all these different techniques, styles, different tools of the trade. And will you be using every tool on every single job? No. No. And will it work for certain roles? Maybe, yeah. But it's it's as the actor, it's like okay, you pick and choose to see what works. And do you find it helps instinctively, mm. the more you've studied, that you just kind of trust your instinct more because you've trained or. How do you deal with that? Because that's something, uh, this question really, literally just popped up right now. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to Rasai. I know there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. But it's all gravy. I, w I just filmed an audition yesterday and I had an instinctual pull uh. to it. And then I kind of suppressed it for a second. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going with the instinct. And yeah. then I did the instinct and I was like, ah, it was the right thing. Have you found yourself trusting your instincts more with the more training you've done? Yeah, definitely. And I feel like the uh, one of the differences in having trained uh, from for myself anyway is that the instincts were always there. I feel like as as actors, we are we we illuminate our imaginations as children, and they never really leaves. Like our way of seeing the world through the specific perspective that we have is tied to the, how we feel and the things that have happened to us. Right? Mm -hmm. Our perspective defines our reality, and it also defines our imagination. Right. But uh, the difference is through the training, I've been able to get rid of some of the fear that will keep me from actually reaching those true impulses that have, are always there. They're just sort of buried underneath a kind of a, a, a layer of fear and self-doubt and those things that every actor deals with on a regular basis. I mean, that's part of it. And if we weren't dealing with fear and self-doubt, it would mean that we don't care about it and we should likely be doing something else. <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah, like for the training, um, 
it it makes me more able to not so much not have the fear but makes me more able to face the fear and say okay you know what? i'm afraid don't know what i'm doing here mm-hmm. but i do know kind of what i'm doing so i'm ready i'm it's like i'm ready to be unready mm-hmm. as opposed to i feel like some actors starting out they feel like they have to have all their shit together they have to have it all together and they're like okay uh don't don't screw up don't mess up uh I, you know i gotta do this right and i feel like that impulse that's a kind of a fear-based impulse which is going to lead to us being in the end unhappy with our work because it didn't really come from that wellspring of the thing that brought us there in the first place, which is our imagination and our desire to communicate a true story. That that also comes from the fact that whenever you're thinking, I need to do this right, you're not thinking about the character in the, in the moment. You're not in the moment. Yeah. Some yeah. of the best scenes are mistakes that people make. Like, I, I feel like there's choices that people make even by accident that you're like, that was perfect. Oh, yeah. It just comes out instinctually. <laughs> The yeah. stuff that slips out the cracks. Yeah, yeah that's like the happy accident. I, I live for that. I love that. I don't know if this was necessarily a, a an accident, but the director kept it in. Uh, you've seen Ocean's Eleven, right? Sure. Have. So it's when Brad. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was lost in your eyes for a moment. <laughs> it's the first time I heard the Beatles. <laughs> um, it's when Brad Pitt and George Clooney they're talking about robbing the casino. Spoiler alert. And George Clooney's trying to convince Brad Pitt to, you know, rob the casino why he needs to do it. Yeah. And he's George Clooney's very natural in the way he's speaking. And then they kind of step into the elevator after he said his speech. And he's like, do you think I rushed it? And Brad Pitt's character goes, no, no, it was, it was fine. It was good. It's like, yeah, I felt I it for Yeah, that was totally them out of character. And George Clooney was actually asking Brad Pitt, was that too forced? I felt like it was forced. And Brad Pitt's like, no, no, it's fine. Like, he was totally like... Amazing. <laughs> They kept it because they were so like in the moment, and yeah. so that's, that's funny. Cool. I didn't know that. That, that. I love that. You should go. You should go back and watch it because then. Yeah. yeah. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're gonna pull up a, a movie right now. Right. <laughs> Play it for an hour. Now. So, how long did you shoot Versailles for? I was there from uh, yeah from the end of August to the end of March, so it was seven months. Seven months. Yeah. And you actually shot it in France. We shot. We we. I lived in Paris. They gave me an apartment in the Marais. It was a dream. It was a total. Wow. Oh, I, I had a, th- a theater school teacher who told us that in your entire career, you, the number of projects you have that will truly feed your heart, you can count on one hand. And uh, I can definitely say that that this has been one of them. Yeah. To live in Paris. Yeah. It was and insane. you shot at the Versailles Par- uh, Palace. I'm we assuming. shot at the Palace of Versailles, oh where the first uh, first uh, television production ever to be able to shoot there. It's the biggest production France has ever made. Like I don't know how I fluked into it. I just like <laughs> I don't know. I just I woke up every morning like just kissing the sky, being right. like, "What am I even doing here?" I've I mean, been to Versailles and yeah. I've been to that palace. Yeah. Have you been there? Yeah, I think oh they, have, they have a plaque there that says "We Sun Kitch was here." I think they did. Yeah. They yeah. did. They yeah. were super excited. It was before I booked any. <laughs> Rolls on awkward or any yeah. TV work, but they had, a, really, they had a premonition. They did, and it yeah. was it freaked me out. Yeah, it was. A, it was. There was a dandy there. Well, that's <laughs> the French. That's the French. They <laughs> real house are filming there next year. Uh, I feel like that's like just overwhelming enough to not just be on a like be on a set in a foreign country, but like it's such an amazing like you can't get better like architecture design. It's just breathtaking. Oh that yeah, entire experience. Oh yeah, and we shot at all the all the the, the castles around France that are previously been closed because the French government is pretty tight on their their cultural priorities which is cool I mean many governments are that way but uh, they had a rule I mean maybe you guys don't care about this but they have a rule uh, a tax rule that you could get a tax break if you were a domestic French speaking program and they actually lobbied the government and changed it to being wow. a any language domestic project program and so because of that we sort of had the French government on our side and because of that they let us they let us kind of have carte blanche with with Locations. That's amazing. And, yeah, it was just, uh, and everybody really cared about the product. You know, we probably cared, cared about the production, and it's a story that hasn't been told. And I'm hoping people are going to like it. I think it's well timed. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm without <laughs> words right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering so, what happened to that plaque. <laughs> there were so many firsts working there, like uh, like you said, uh, working in Europe, working with European directors, and uh, working in a, a period piece. I had to use a, I was a, had a British accent because you know if it's if it's an old time land, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter where you are, everybody has a British accent. That's just the way it is. So <laughs> all these French characters are walking around with British accents, but it'll make sense, I promise. And one of the other things was uh, my character is homosexual in the show, right? Which uh, was the first time that I've ever played a gay, gay character, and uh, was a, a revelation. 
I had so much fun playing a gay character. Um, I mean, I'm straight. I'm, I'm cool with it. But I realized as I was shooting the extent to which I had always been, uh, the, the, the energy that I had always expelled my whole life and making sure that people knew I was straight. I don't know, maybe that's coming from Canada, huh. Canada coming from like a, like a prairie province, right? cowboys and stuff, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I just realized while I was doing that shoot that we as human beings have a reservoir of power in both what we say and also in what we don't say. Right. And I realized in sort of my ambiguity that I, I didn't need to prove anything to anyone. And that, and that informed my life a little bit and also informed my acting a little bit and made me a little bit freer and... Um, like what we said about the training giving us the opportunity to sort of uh, be free. It was, uh, yeah. But. Well, sorry, go ahead, John. No, I was going to say, how do you throw yourself into a situation where you have all of these firsts being a performer? And like, do you, were you like nervous about that? Like, oh, yeah, just sure. It? Totally. Yeah. But the, what would you do is you throw yourself into it. Yeah. I mean, like, that, well, that's what I did. I mean, it's the same thing as getting into a, a pool. I don't want to dip my toe. That's excruciating. <laughs> And also, you have so many opportunities to decide you don't want to do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd be like, um, as an actor, I think we're always um, honing the uh, skill, which is to jump. And uh, so, and by that nature, we always have like more opportunities to jump. Is more opportunities to learn. The bigger the jump, the more we learn. I really like the idea and the mindset of just letting it all go to free yourself a little bit. Well, that's what we all it, want, right? As an actor, you, you kind of have to be like that. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's what humans want. I mean, that's I think that's why humans like to watch stories, so they can let themselves go for a second. I'm I'm kind of hesitant to say though, like do what makes you happy, because in today's day and age, like you know, it's like <laughs> people are crazy. You, <laughs> sure, no, people. They'll they'll take things, <laughs> the enjoyments of life. Like, yeah, I want to drink a bottle. of of uh, G- Jim Beam, you know, I don't know why they sound like that. All of a sudden, Jim Beam, <laughs> <laughs> but it's. <laughs> I don't you know. know I'm really you know, researching you, that... there's there's uh, a whiskey named uh, Evan yes. Williams, and I was you like, know, I had heard that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you never got that. They don't have ever. that. In, they don't have it in Canada, actually. They don't. I was surprised when I got down here. You just bring it back. You'd be like, guys, I started a distillery. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> for yeah. me, trying to do research on you, I'm sure yeah. it's double frustrating for you. Yeah, because then I want to drink. Well, it is. You know, I I thought for a while I should make my name Evan Martin Williams, just okay. because it'd be maybe may more visible. But also, I'm like, I don't care about being visible. I just want to tell stories, and if my work will speak for me, then people will figure out my name. I kind of that's kind of maybe that's stupid. Maybe I'm not much of a businessman, but no, no, that's but I don't know. So, so then, what what are your priorities in life? It seems like just like what's the things most important to you? In well, life? I've. Um, I actually became very clear on that once I moved to LA because I feel like LA is a place where the current is very strong and uh, maybe you'll agree that the, the sort of the pillars of society here are not necessarily like morality is not really <laughs> one LA? of the great what? pillars nah. of society here. it's more sort of like <laughs> right. youth and beauty and money and fame right and uh, none of those things actually uh, matter like in the long run of anything but considering that we're on a ball flying through space <laughs> right right and all like had been like rushing towards our own demise since the moment we've been born i don't mean to be macabre because if, without the ability for something to expire there's like there's no, no. no reason for it to have existed in the first place and like, you don't have sweet without sour so that being that as, mm-hmm. as it is that being a given that we live for a limited amount of time on this earth being in this city i feel like you you either get swept away by the current or you get strong by swimming against it and living here forced me to ask myself who am I? What do I stand for? What am I doing here? And uh, I think I really landed on the fact that my life is to be an artist. And to be an artist to me is to be active in the war against fear and like alienation and like helping to dismantle the lie, this colluded lie that's somehow sold to us by capitalism that, it, that says that we are inherently separate from each other, that we are apart mm. and that we are alone and that we need all of these things to put a bandage on the fact that we are secretly alone. And I don't believe that to be true at all. I mean, if you can look at it spiritually, you can look at it mechanically, you can look at it scientifically. Um, at any point along those things, all literature will tell us that we are connected in either a spooky way or in a very natural way or in a very like physical way. And uh, I think the artist's job through stories, through images, is um, to make people feel 
each other. I don't think people necessarily think. People don't like, I'm, I'm, of course people think, but people don't really listen unless you get them at a very specific time or you say a very specific thing because everybody's different. It's hard to say something that everybody's going to listen to. I mean, that's Especially like, if you look at, look at politics, yeah. absolutely. But people don't listen, but they feel. And if you can make somebody feel, they can't deny the fact that they felt something. I need, I need to counter you on that. And I, and I agree with you. And I, I, I think that's a, a great thing, the, the basis of what you're saying. Uh. I think it's also dangerous because if people are just so, like look at politics, for instance, mm. if they just feel, mm. you have a very manipulative person on a podium, mm. they can start making those people feel things for their own benefit. Yeah. I think there has to be a little bit of thinking involved, though. And no, go ahead. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Like, I think that people should listen more, but I think that it's right in the fact that people feel. It's a natural instinct to just feel as opposed to, like, how do you feel about this? And everyone can talk about it, but what do you think about this? And people could be, oh, no. Yeah, I so, think it's like, a very basic thing. That's the yeah. problem with, like, a lot of things. Like, I understand what you're saying with, like, something like politics is, like, people don't listen, but they feel. So it, it's a natural instinct. So it's a matter of, like, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. But I think with acting, it's, like, specifically, if you can make someone feel, you're going to get more out of the, you're going to get more from your performance. And also, those people will be moved by you more than actually having to listen because well, people don't, I don't know. Well, and at the end of the day, it's about the people feeling. It's not really about yeah. the actor having a good performance. It's about it, like, you know, the actor's good performance is what makes the person feel and the change that happens because of that person feeling uh, is the purpose of the art in the per first place. People say that art doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful. All it has to be is moving. And I feel like if, if we are destabilizing people so they start feeling and asking themselves questions like, wow, I didn't really expect to be moved by this. For example, uh, the, I play a gay character on Versailles, mm -hmm. and it's going to be playing in a lot of places where I know that um, people have challenging ideas about homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And we are really approaching the relationship, myself and my co-star Alexander Vlahos from, uh, from Wales, he, uh, who is awesome, by the way. Alex, if you're listening, I love you, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, we really approach the relationship not as a gay love story, but just as a love story between two individuals. And we tried to uh, to defend it that way and tried to bring realism to that. And so I'm hoping that when people see the show, maybe people who had preconceived notions about uh, like ideas, thoughts about what they think they think about homosexuality. I'm hoping that when they see some, hopefully we were able to, I say hopefully because, you know, who knows. <laughs> but uh, I mean, what we were shooting for was to try to bring a level of reality to it and a level of heart to it that maybe will sneak in the side of some of these people who have their ideas, their minds made up, and make them feel, ooh, maybe just for one second, wow, I, I relate to these people. And then because of that, that's what I'm talking about feeling. They're going to feel themselves in another person. And uh, right. that, that reflexivity is what makes acting, what makes theater, what makes it, what makes it magic. Absolutely, I think that's great. When the, you can actually take like, it's basically breaking down like the specifics of labels on things and just making it so raw and specific. Yeah, it's like it's very direct. Yeah, and it may seem high-minded or lofty, but I don't mind sounding high-minded and lofty because otherwise, I had to ask myself that question while I was here. I'm like, am I just a whore? Am I just trying to like, yeah? Because it's easy to feel that way. You're like. You know, carting yourself around to all these auditions and being like, pick me, pick me. And at the end of the day, do I want that on my tombstone? Do I want to be like, he was a really great whore? <laughs> like, I, like, that's, um, I'm never too far yes. away from thinking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I want that as like a sub, like a like an asterisk. I mean, I would love Super to great see whore. that at someone's <laughs> grave, but I mean, I mean that's my your own name. grave. I don't know if you're <laughs> instead of Mar instead of Evan Martin Williams, I'm going to be go Evan Super Great Whore Williams. <laughs> so. You said something really, really interesting. It's having making people feel and mm -hmm. connect having that be the bridge for them to think mm -hmm. and really reflect on themselves mm -hmm. reflect on the choices they've made reflect on what kind of life they're living yeah. what kind of life the, their friends and family are living i think that's so crucial because it's so easy and to get kind of wish washed by your emotions you know wh whichever way the wind breezes you kind of like oh i'm upset i'm really upset oh mm -hmm. i'm really happy something really good happened to me yeah there's a, there's a great book I've mentioned on the show before. It's called The Hermetica. It's by Hermes Trice Great. He was like a philosopher during ancient Egypt. And he talks about how to try to keep your emotions, you know, like a pendulum switch that yep. goes to the left, to the right. Yep. Try to keep it kind of in that middle, mm -hmm. that, that peaceful Zen place. So if something good happens to you, 
Don't mm. get overly happy. Something really bad happens to you. Don't get overly sad. Just kind of stay in there. Yeah. And it's not to keep you cold hearted. A lot of people's initial reaction is to be like, oh, no, then you're cold. You don't feel anything. No, it's it's just about a feeling appropriate. Yeah. I, I don't know. To be more in control of your emotions and to kind of totally. elevate yourself. Totally. I feel like a lot of extreme emotion, too, is about reacting to our reactions. Mm. Like there may be something that makes you upset, makes you, something makes you angry. But then you go through this loop, which is like, oh, man, I'm so angry about that. And then you get angry that you're angry. And then you get your angry that you're angry that you're angry. Mm. And then all of a sudden you're red in the face and you're freaking out and you're come, jumping out of your car on the highway oh, and you're clubbing people. It happens to me whenever I'm like, you ever try to argue with somebody in the, in the past where you like, you know, it's a losing battle. You know, they're not going to change their mind. They're, it's a very. I don't know what you mean. I don't know why you're saying that. I'm you know sorry. what? <laughs> no, but it's i don't know for me i've i've encountered like that people before about you know religious things political things sure. i'm not going to mention this stuff on air but and then i, I just want got names. you want names <laughs> you want social security numbers <laughs> no but then i stop myself and i kind of look at them and i'm like okay you, there's no nothing i could say is going to change your mind or produce a positive effect on you because of where you're at mentally totally. so it's i don't know it, there's listening. like a peaceful what's that <laughs> said cuz they're not listening there you go it's like what we say on the show <laughs> always remember to listen, think. Don't say it because they're going to think we're, send, we're <laughs> ending the show. <laughs> Bye. So, uh, see, I, I come from a different perspective, though. I like, I don't want to say mood swings, but I like the extremes of, as a writer, like I, I benefit more from like, oh, this is dark. I can use this. Right. But I don't, I, I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think that's taking things. You're not like. Yeah. I think that's like a very leveled and like, that's a, that's a very thoughtful approach like the, the like you're like ooh high emotion i can use this the fact that you're using it means you're employing it as a, as opposed to like ooh oh, high emotions like ah, <laughs> yeah ah, i'm too happy yeah, yeah that's that's what i think that's what we're talking about we we got to take a quick break uh but when we come back we're going to be talking about a little bit about your audition prep if well, you wouldn't well, mind talking about that we have some listener questions and we will be playing the infamous game I haven't said the title yet. Oh, you haven't yeah. said the title? Oh, okay. So a secret. A, a secret game. Oh, gosh. I don't even know the game. Secret game. We'll be right back. <laughs> Cast It Talent is pleased to support Actors Anonymous. Cast It Talent, for more than a decade, we've been working to make sure that the right actor has the opportunity to compete for the right job and has the right online tools to pursue that job. The Cast It Talent online showcase, Gig Finder, major open calls like Star Wars and Jungle Book, and Feedback by Cast It Certified Casting Pros within 24 hours. CastItTalent.com, at CastItTalent, and Cast it Talent on Instagram or Facebook. Hashtag right actor, right job. Put a flavored condom on your head because your mind is about to get blown. High school is over. Blackout party at the beach, bitches. You're legit popular. Oh, Maddie f***ing McKibben. Have to tell her. But I still want to be with you. You still want to be with me? Welcome to the Enchanted Fantasy Prom. Be sure to sign up for the raffle. You could win a rainbow. Awkward. Season 5 premiering August 31st at 9, 8 central. Only on MTV. Are we back? Wait. We're back. Not be talking. <laughs> we're already back and we're going to keep it. Yeah. All right. How are you I, doing today? You were ta just I'm talking about being good. patient zero. I want to be patient zero. That's this, a weird thing things to say. I want Explain in life, to our guys. listeners. If I ever get an acting gig, I want it to be one scene where I come into a room and I go, shut it down. And I just leave. That is a, that is <laughs> pretty forceful. Right? What shut kind of physicality, down. what kind of animal essence do you think he could uh, portray with that? I feel like maybe like a little bit of bulldog. Yeah. Like just it's all on all the neck. Shut it down. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> you just became southern too. Shut it down. Shut it down. Right now. That is the most ridiculous. <laughs> it came out so naturally. <laughs> Shut it down. Practice bulldog in the mirror. You don't do that. Yeah. Uh, oh. And patient zero. I want to be patient. In in real life, I want to be patient zero on something. In real life, you want to be. A I don't want it actually. I I imagine it will happen. Like Ebola two. Like like whatever's gonna. <laughs> Whatever killed off the dinosaurs comes back and starts all over again. There's no, there's no patient zero with a, with a meteorite. Yeah. It just opens some. Type Unless of you take a rock. rocket ship yeah. and you go and ride the meteorite onto Earth. I'm going to go to a space museum <laughs> and just break open rocks and like inhaling stuff just to see what happens. I love the balance of this episode so far. We had such a deep conversation in the first half. The second one is. Wow. Long gone Pete time. <laughs> 
question, yes. Evan. Sir. Your audition prep. Mm. What's that like? Is that different for every role, or do you kind of just go with your instincts nowadays? Um, uh, I feel like it depends on my situation. Like if it's pilot season and I have no time, I'll be I'll be shooting from the hip. And um, I think after doing that for a couple of pilot seasons, you get more easy with doing that and less guilt about like, oh my God, I don't have enough time. Because for a while, that's actually a legit concern, feeling like you want to spend more time of it and you're not bringing your best self into the room. But I realize that my best self will be there if I allow it to be there as opposed to trying to construct my best self and make sure. Because then it goes back to what we were talking about, about trying to do a really good job. I feel like, yeah, an actor trying to do a good job is not as exciting as an actor who is like flailing and going down. Like That's what I'm talking about, like failure. Right. There's two ways to fail. You can either fail in or fail out. And for auditions, I feel like that's my that's my mantra is I want to fail out. I want to like if I'm gonna go down, I want to go down in flames. I want to go down in like like a burning ball of glory that people are gonna be like, wow, that was ugly, but I'm not gonna forget it. As opposed to like, well, that guy did pretty much everything pretty good. Because I thought like, nobody wants to. Nobody's gonna hire that guy who did every everything pretty much pretty good. They're gonna hire the guy who's like, what the f- was that? Right, and I, I got an acting teacher um, who says, "Try to lose the job." It's like go into an audition, try to lose the job, because they don't. They don't <laughs> like it's. Sorry. A, it, it's just it just made me giggle a little bit. Yeah, well, because your mind goes wild, your imagination goes wild. <laughs> yeah, within reason. Just start listen. knocking things With, over. Yeah, no bodily fluids. <laughs> just pull out a knife. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah, <laughs> let's anywhere. do this. Let's do this, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you turn Spanish? <laughs> oh my it's god! It's a cholo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, so that's kind of really what I'm wh- what I've been focusing on recently in my auditions is uh, trying to take the onus off of myself, and that that is uh, I, I I'm an actor who prepares, like I'm I I came from from Canada, came a long way to be here. Um, I I spent four years getting a degree, and I've I've been working for a while, and I uh, I mean not compared to some people, I mean I've still got a lot to learn, but I know that it's important to me, and I know that I'm gonna keep doing it. Right. And so as like there's some other kind of, kind of actors who are like fly by the seat of their pants and don't prepare. And for those people, I'd say maybe, yeah, maybe prepare. But there's also a lot of actors I know who care. Like I usually actors are huge nerds and we really care about what we're doing. And yeah. we put on like a bit of a, a veneer of like cool because we don't want to admit that we're such complete and total nerds. Mm-hmm. And also we don't want to admit that we want like we really want to be like on a stage, which means that we admit that we want to be looked at, which means that somehow we must believe that we're worthy of being looked at which really is usually not the case actors are usually the most insecure people ever but we just really want to tell stories like the actors i like are the ones who just really want to tell stories and the story is more important than the actor so all you said uh i disagree with no i'm kidding <laughs> it's great <laughs> just get out just, <laughs> yeah. i i didn't really answer your question no 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 it you, you we got to a really good point sometimes for a lot of actors they have a problem of being in the moment mm-hmm. something we mentioned just a little bit ago yeah and especially in auditions because there's so many distractions that we have yeah for me i like to i really if i have the time meditate before an audition if, oh, even, yeah. if especially if it's for something big i'm really excited about i want to meditate and just get in that zone and from the moment like i get in my car i start picking music that my character would listen to mm-hmm. and like not give a like almost ignore everybody in the room ignore the traffic lights yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've I'm in a lot of trouble there's some <laughs> civil lawsuits against me I've killed people <laughs> someone <laughs> banging on the door right? <laughs> what can I ask you what, what is the weirdest song you've ever played for a character good question weirdest song <laughs> yeah like what's I, outside of your wheelhouse because I know I, I I have a very eclectic okay I was it was probably the one where I was crying the whole way to the audition and so I played a lot of Sigur Ross. Oh, dude. And I was... I can't even talk about it right now. I was bawling in the car. Have you seen bawling. the video with the little kids in the post-apocalyptic? Have you seen it? It's a Sigur Ross video. I don't know the name of the song, but it's like little kids and it starts and they're putting like their jackets on because it's recess. And then they put their gas masks on and they go outside and they're playing and it's all slow motion. They're like running around and playing in the ash. It's like that's pretty cool. It's it, it's like it sounds ludicrous, but it's beautiful. It sounds cinematic. That's it's why it's so cool. cinematic. Say it like, oh, it's cool. I want to see that. Yeah. Awesome. No, but what I was saying, or what I was trying to get to, was <laughs> t- for me focusing to get into that moment. It uh-huh. took a lot of practice. Like I've been through hundreds of auditions. It feels like, and it's just like practice, 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 and then yeah. finally you're just like, 
boom, I've done this a hundred times. Yeah. And it just kind of like falls into place. Like, you're, okay, I'm going to be in the moment. Yeah, totally. Does well, that have, is that your experience? Or is I mean, that- yeah, I mean, I feel like I have as much trouble being or staying in the moment as the next person. But I think over the course of uh, years of working, I feel like I just, I let it be not such a big deal. Yeah. And I think that's part of it is that like actors get up in their head about being in the moment. Like, oh, oh I'm not in the moment right now. Ah. Whereas like there are many times given in any day where we as human beings will be in the moment. <laughs> and it's not some holy grail that we're chasing as actors, I don't believe. I feel like it's very, like I, I don't want to sound like a dick, but it's like it's both the hardest thing and also the easiest thing ever to be in the moment. Mm. It's just about allowing. And I, I think I think meditating totally helps because it, for me, it's a, a lot about relaxation and ease because it's a you can't really put you can't kick yourself into the moment. I, I had a realization I wanted to share with you guys right. with with my meditation, and it's kind of like I feel like I've not overcome this, but I'm aware of it now, uh-huh. and I am aware of the problem of of uh, or obstacle of meditating. So when you know what they tell you, like just focus on breathing, mm. that is actually one of the hardest things to do, and sometimes it's almost impossible because your brain is being flooded with things. Totally. But when you start like literally focusing on just breathing and you, you feel like a thought coming in and then you said, nope, breathe it mm. in, out, mm. in, out. Oh my gosh. For a split second, you begin to really third person perspective. That's the only way to describe it mm. on yourself. Mm. And you're not thinking about it. And then you, as soon as you go, oh, I'm in. I, it's happening right now. You lose him. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty nuts. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted to share that. It's, it's, it's pretty bonkers. It's pretty bonkers. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like being in the moment is just like it, you you're in the moment if uh you get surprised. You're in the moment if uh you're in your car and something happens and you realize you might die. Like I feel like Yeah. We are in the moment. So you're in the moment anything that you don't expect happens. And the only reason we don't notice all the things that are unexpected is because we're not looking. We're not noticing them. And I feel like like if I wanted to be in the moment with you, all I got to do is start paying attention to you. Because there's all sorts of things about you which I didn't notice because everything is changing about you all the time. So there's always going to be something more to notice. Mm. Like I'm looking at your face right now and I'm noticing all kinds of things about your face that I didn't know. Right. And all of a sudden, here I am with you. Yeah. As opposed to like feeling you watching me. And being like, okay, so what does he think about me? Right. And because uh, then all of a sudden, I, I can already feel like I stopped my my body's frozen. I stopped breathing. My voice went up into my throat, and <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what does Wisdom think of me? <laughs> oh my god! A lot of people have that problem. Don't also, your me. eyes are beautiful. Oh, thank you, man. I like your eyes too. What are they, gray or blue? Uh, they're blue green. If you must know. I must know. Wow. Blue green. I'm kind of jealous. Hey, you know what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think you both got lost in the moment there. <laughs> that was a <the> moment. <laughs> okay, we're going to do listener questions. And I believe we have a, a, a verified Twitter user who uh, just shot us a question. His That's name is Alexander Vlahos. <laughs> <laughs> this is your co-star on Versailles, correct? Yes, he plays uh, Philippe Duc d'Orléans. Philippe Duc d'Orléans? Duc d'Orléans, who is the, uh, the brother of the king. And all the characters in Versailles are real characters. Well, most of them. Uh, the majority of the characters in Versailles are real characters, and the the actual events of history are real events. And uh, truth is stranger than fiction. You're going to see. Anyway, this guy does some crazy shit in the show. Crazy. Wow. Capital C crazy. Well, Alexander, uh, why did I say it with an accent? <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> if Chivo and Monty. My could... character's name is, is Chevalier. Ah. And his uh, his uh, his character's name is uh, Monty. Gotcha. So no, the two characters really in Versailles that you guys play could go anywhere in time and space. Where would they go and why? Hashtag Ask Evan. Hashtag Ash, uh, Ask Evan. Yeah, so he, his character's name is Monsieur. Monsieur Philippe. So uh, Chivo and Monty, those are our pet names. Um, if we could go anywhere in time and space, I would go to the far, far, far-flung future uh, w- Well, with Monty, Chivo and Monty together. And uh, once you see us together, you're gonna understand we're like right. uh, it's we're a couple of dandies together. And uh, I yeah, I would go su- like to the super 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 far future. Okay. And then I would attempt to kind of bring the old style to the new future. 
and uh, and like we like have a new renaissance basically and then we would rule with like I don't know not the iron fist but like the gloved lace gloved golden <laughs> fist yeah. golden fist I think that's yeah. a website golden fist <laughs> oh my god don't type that in <laughs> do not kids disregard disregard that kid <laughs> to people on their cell phones driving to work <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks for the question Alex yeah thank you Alexander uh, we look forward to uh, hashtag golden glove hashtag <laughs> golden <laughs> Boxers are going to be like, no, this is not cool. No. All right. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. Mm-hmm. I think it's game time. What it do you think, Jordan? game time. Game time. The game is casting call. <coughs> what? What, what we're going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> have you guys each pick a number between 1 and 10. Okay. And I will assign you the actual character that you will be voicing. And then we will give a scenario, which Nicole will pick a number. And I will tell you what you will both be playing, and you Amazing. will act out a scene. Amazing. <clears throat> you, you are a guest. Please start us off. One through ten. Seven. Three. This is, this is going to be good. And can you give me a number, one through five? Uh, two. Two. All right. You are Tamara from Awkward. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jillian, I'm sorry. And you'll be playing Peter Griffin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. Where did I even start? I've never done that most before. The scenario, oh, this, get, this is going to be weird. Uh, the scenario is that uh, you are both in line at a grocery store. When Tamara realizes that she went to high school with Peter, they start conversing only to realize, only for Peter to realize that Tamara stole his girlfriend. Oh my gosh! Help, help me out here, uh, Family Guy. I always watch the show. I forgot the wife's <coughs> name. The Lois. Lois. Nah. Lois. Lo- Lois. Lo- okay. Lois. Okay, we're gonna go for it. <laughs> Tamara, like her her speech is so fast <laughs> and like so complicated. I feel like just make up make okay. up like letters to go together, and we'll totally buy it. Okay, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Tom- oh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> Peter. <coughs> Omg. Oh, I didn't know. What are you? What are you doing here? Well, I'm just getting my man- morning dose of nutritious vitamin S. Vitamin what? Nutritious vitamin S. Oh, it's when you have lots of vitamins with nutritious. <laughs> that I haven't seen you forever. How, how, I'm, I'm chewing on a candy bar, apparently. <laughs> I know. I saw that, but maybe you shouldn't drink so much uh, soft drinks because I can tell that your your waist is a little bit F M O, <laughs> which is fat mounds of <laughs> oaf. <laughs> that. <laughs> that, is somebody dying over here? Like, that, that's that's crazy. Oh I'm God. I'm talking like somebody <laughs> else now. Okay, we're done. I need to teach you the Rhode oh Island accent, we Sam. <laughs> I'm talking somebody following Peter. me. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my. Okay. This you gotta. You gotta eh, it's nasally. Eh. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. God. Hey Lois. Hey Lois. 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 Oh my God. Lois Griffin. Huh. That was kind of like huh. that, right? That's not, that's, we'll practice you just, it. You need to do the laugh. Just like, nee. That's all you got. All right. All right. We'll, I feel new, like one. A, new one. New Different one. Different numbers. Oh Different numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that one, yeah, that was a, that I was, apologize. Abort. That was a pass Abort. fail. Abort. <laughs> <laughs> that was spot on for tomorrow. Hey, that was come on. Get out of here. <laughs> um, pick a number, folks. Uh, five. Five. A nine. <laughs> <laughs> you will be playing Alec Baldwin and you will be playing Doug the dog from Up <laughs> that's gonna be difficult cause somebody didn't see that movie what? I've never seen Up yet pick, uh, another, pick, another, pick, number. pick another number 6 Ron Burgundy oh, perfect. oh okay, okay. Yeah. can we get a scenario number 5 during an interview on the show, Actors Anonymous podcast, Evan starts to talk with Wee Sam, only to think that he is now the host of the show. Wee Sam continues to talk, doubting why he's here. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask you a question. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're going to ask me anything you want, Alec. Big fan. Thank you for coming on the show, by the way. Oh, it w- I mean... I think you have this confused. No, I think you're, you're, I think it's very important for our viewers to uh, to hear what you have to say. So uh, I, I think it's important for my viewers to feel that it's important for what you have to say. Let me ask you a really important question here. Uh, go ahead. 
What do you use on that beautiful air? Well, it's a uh, mix of poodle oil, where we squeeze poodles and get their nutrition oil and put it in my hair. You know, I knew you were going to say that. Did you? I sure did. That's that's great. I feel like you think this is your show for some reason. <laughs> well, it is my show. Um, I don't. Think and I just so. want to tell you, usually when guests come on, they usually dress a little nicer than you did. It's not your fault. That's a. Uh, that, sir, is fighting words. Put them up. No, Put no, up no, your dukes. no, 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 it's not your fault. I, I appreciate the choices you make, but they just might have been a different choice, that's all. Right. You, sir, are... Different choices. <laughs> <Different choice. laughs> <laughs> it's it's got too low tone. <laughs> <laughs> Both your voices are, like, competing. Oh, man, how, okay. How low can our voices go? <laughs> last one, last one. <laughs> last one. Numbers. Um, Two. Nine. He did not. Oh, ten. Number? Three. Three. <laughs> This is stupid. Um, you'll be playing Donald Trump, please, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And Evan, you will be Elmer Fudd. <laughs> Your scenario will be... Cool. Uh, you will be the coach of a hot dog eating contest, while we, Sam, you will be the contestant. The coach will be giving helpful tips and techniques. <laughs> Well, Wait, so I'm well, the coach and he's, yeah. the, he's the contestant? Yes. And I'm Donald Trump and you're Elmer Fudd. <laughs> and, and you will continuously, as a contestant, be getting angrier with him. Oh my god, this is... Uh, Thank you, Nicole. You something. <laughs> <laughs> so. before, before we start, I just want to say that I'm not comfortable doing this. <laughs> that... <laughs> Uh, that's okay. How does web it? How does web it? The web it. The web it. Uh, the web it. The web it. Uh, the web it? Yeah. There what was... you wanted? to <laughs> 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 uh, Get it uh, in your mouth. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. I've never been talked to like that. <laughs> I feel like I'm on... Just uh, lubricate that wascoey. <laughs> that not... wascoey sausage. <laughs> What and just I slide can't... it, <laughs> slide it down there. <laughs> now, now wait a minute. What kind of? Maybe what... try two at a time. <laughs> That's right. Oh <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I can't. I can't even talk. That's it. We're ending it right now. Oh my god. That <laughs> is. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Are we gonna get some angry treats from, from Elmer Fudd? Oh my, oh my gosh. god. The Looney wow. Tunes are going to be on our ass. Yeah. Um, we lost I, a sponsor, I'd like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to, I'd like to point out that while Nicole is helping me come up with people to impersonate, she goes, why don't we do sign language? I'm like, we're a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Nicole. <laughs> Guys, what a what a great episode. Evan, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. My pleasure. Man. Thanks for having me, guys. Such great gems of advice. Um, if you can uh, leave our viewers with one piece of advice for the struggling artist or the working artist, what, what would you give? I'd say that uh, the world doesn't want who you think you have to be. The world needs who you are, so be who you are. Excellent. And you, that's, you're already that thing. So, Excellent. Excellent. There you are. Uh, you are on the interweb, correct? I'm on the interwebs. I am. Where can people find you on Twitter or Instagram? Uh, Twitter, my handle is uh, at Evan underscore M underscore Williams. And um, Instagram, Instagram, Evan M. Williams, all one word. And uh, Facebook, uh, Evan Williams official. Great. And, uh, but mostly I'm on Instagram. So, awesome. So uh, follow me there. Uh, big Sweet. thanks to Alexander Vlahos, correct? Yeah, thanks, Alex. You're a co-star on the show. You're, you're a gem and a peach. <laughs> Uh, big thanks to our sponsor, Cast It Talent. Cast It is the exclusive partner to Cast It's network of more than 10,000 of Hollywood's top casting directors, producers, directors, and studio execs. Check out castittalent.com. Awkward returns August 31st. That's true. In about very a week exciting. or so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll be very fun. There's lots of surprises, correct? This, uh, oh, this, yeah. This year? It's going to be a landmine cacophony of surprises Lots i was gonna changes. say minefield that's but then i once i said landmine, i had to say landmine cacophony yeah Perfect. that's actually the name of my new band landmine cacophony it's uh they're would, in canada it. right yeah i we, i just i just formed them just now just now i yeah, would buy that amazing. cd not knowing what music it was 15 bucks i will do it great talk i don't have cash that's canadian <laughs> canadian bucks or yeah 15 canadian dollars which is actually three american dollars oh, so that, that, that i can do you're in that line. is yes 
Big <laughs> thanks to uh, Jordan. Thanks for co-hosting as always. Thanks for having me. Thanks for liking me. I'm glad we're friends. You know Are what? Are we friends? We're friends. Yeah, I mean, on Facebook and stuff, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's Facebook official. <laughs> it's Facebook yeah. official. You're on uh, Twitter? At Jordan Burbank 7. Big thanks to GVB Radio and G, uh, GB, GVBstudios.com <laughs> GVB, and Gabe GVB. here for all the hard work you do for the show. And big thanks to Nikki for sound engineering this mofo. At Nikki592. <laughs> Break a leg, Nikki. <laughs> it's hurt. <clears throat> N- oh, Nikki oh, doesn't have an audition. I'm telling her just to break your leg. I know. I was just does. making a joke, Nikki. <laughs> she's got a better. She's got a, a better gig lined up. Wow. Never mind. I'm not even gonna talk. Nikki, Forget you're gonna it. kill it. Done. You're gonna kill Over. it. Over. Guys, Quit. you can find me at We Sam Quiche Twitter and Instagram at We Sam Quiche. Our podcast at Podcast AA ActorsAnonymousPodcast.com. Hit us up with your listener questions. We'd love to answer them. This podcast is for you. Am I forgetting anything, Jordan? Um. Now we're good. I just want people to remember that it's all mental. It's all in your head. We're, we're all mental. We're all mental. <laughs> no. um, and always remember to listen, think, and then talk. <laughs>